It is my absolute mission to get one thing across to you, and that is good value consumables will have more of a positive impact on your woodworking hobby or career than anything else. When used as intended, good consumables will always be less expensive than the cheaper alternative. That is why we rented the Phantom TMX 7510, one of the world's slowest slow motion, high definition cameras in the world. I've been on a little Omicron and surgery related sabbatical, but I'm back, baby. We got tons of footage coming up. So today we're taking a comprehensive look at the most common saw blades, how to use them, when to deploy them, and we're doing that at 60,000 frames per second. That's 60,000 pictures per second. So even I learned a bunch of new stuff doing this, and I am so excited to talk to you about this. So let's do a little refresher and review some terms quickly, and then we'll get into the most common saw blades, thin curve versus thick curve, how to clean them, all of it. Let's do a little refresher on some terms we're gonna use in this video. The tooth. Obviously, where the rubber meets the road, the sharp pointy bit that does the cutting. The higher end blades are gonna have carbide brazed on. Cheaper blades sometimes will have steel teeth or very tiny amounts of carbide that are, are only one time use. The more carbide, the better. The longer your blade's gonna last, the more sharpenings you can get out of it. The more teeth a blade has, the slower and cleaner it's gonna cut. The less teeth, the faster it's gonna cut. Gullet, the big valley in between the teeth, the less teeth a blade has, the bigger these gullets need to be. It is responsible for cooling the cut in two ways. One, it brings air into the cut, keeping it cooler. It also brings sawdust out of the cut. Obviously, when you cut sawdust, it needs to go somewhere, it goes into that gullet. Grind. Grind defines how the tooth is cut, and it makes a big difference on what purpose that tooth has. There's ATB, alternate tooth bevel, that is when the tooth has an angle at the top and each tooth angles to the left or to the right. There's FTG, flat top grind, that is a tooth that has a flat top. Those are gonna be more typical in heavy removal blades. And then there's TCG, which is trapezoidal chip grind or triple chip grind. It has a flat top with two angled sides. It's very common in like combo blades or high tooth count miter saw blades and blades used for cutting non-ferrous metal or acrylic. We got one of the coolest shots of all time that, with this dado stack that demonstrates both ATB and FTG in the same cut. You can see as this exits, it has both style of teeth, which is what makes it so versatile. And you can see the ATB, the beveled teeth taking a slicing cut from the tip of the tooth, and that's what gives it that clean edge. And those are followed by the FTG teeth, which are creating a shaving and removing a ton of material. The bevel or cutting angle is also part of the grind, and that refers to like the ATB angle or the flat top angle. It ranges from zero to 40 degrees, zero being flat top, obviously. The higher the angle, like 40 degrees, the better and cleaner the cut's gonna be, but also the faster it's gonna dull. If you think about like a point, at a high, very high angle like that, they get really, really narrow towards the top, so it's gonna dull faster. Rake or hook angle is the angle at which the tooth is leaned towards the piece of wood that you're cutting. More aggressive rake angle, like 20 degrees, typical of a rip cut, very aggressive, whereas a negative five is like on a high tooth count miter saw blade and is gonna lead to a cleaner cut, but cut a lot slower. And then simply kerf is just the thickness of the cut the blade makes. A full kerf blade is gonna be about an eighth of an inch. A thin kerf blade is gonna be about three thirty seconds. We're gonna talk a lot more about the difference of those after we get through the blades. And then lastly, I wanna discuss rip versus cross cut. Rip is along the grain of the wood. Trees grow like a rope. They've got fibers that go up through the tree and that is a rip cut. It's much easier to get through, but you have to go longer distance. Cross cut is across the grain. You're severing those fibers. Usually you're going a shorter distance, but it's a lot harder to get through. You can't rip with a cross cut blade or you get burning and you can't cross cut with a rip blade or you'll get tear out. So let's talk about the five most common blades. Rip, cross cut, which comes in fine in ultra finish, general purpose, combination, and dado. Now, like I said, we're gonna talk more about thin and full curve after we talk about these, but you can assume that the information I'm about to give you applies to both thin and full curve. They may have some minor geometry differences, but they are the same in their function. We're gonna break these up into three groups. First, we're gonna talk about the two, what I believe are the most important blades, or at least the two dedicated blades, and that's rip and cross cut. All right, first one is rip blades. They are great for ripping, obviously, especially when you're milling lots of lumber, resawing under four inches. They create a nice glue line joint, and it is my most used blade because by definition, ripping takes the longest. You're spending the most amount of time at the saw when you're ripping lumber. They typically come with 24 teeth, sometimes 30. They have a flat top grind. Sometimes the thin curve ones will have a slow angle, alternate tooth bevel. When it comes to rake, they have an aggressive 20 degree angle. In fact, you can see in this shot here how much material it has to remove and why those gullets are so deep. Because you have less teeth, it quickly makes rip cuts without burning. 
And what's great about a rip blade is when you use it for its intended purpose, it's gonna increase the lifespan of all your blades because you're not trying to rip with you know, a higher tooth count general purpose or combination blade. And because of the flat top grind, it's great for doing splines or grooves when I'm too lazy to put my dado stack in. Limitations. Because of that heavy rake angle and the low tooth count, it's gonna be really bad at cross cuts. You probably get a lot of tear out. So, Let's talk about crosscut blades. Crosscut blades come in typically a 60 or 80 tooth. Uh, if you get a 12 inch, I think it's 72 or 96. They're great for super clean crosscuts, cutting plywood, and they are great in miter saws. Now I probably use my crosscut blade the least of some of my other blades, but I also really, really protect it because when you need a good crosscut, you need it to be great. Or you want a clean plywood cut, you need it to be great. Like I said, tooth count above 60. They are ATB or very high angle ATB typically. 15 to 40 degrees on the high end. Rake is negative five to 15 degrees. And that's because, you know, like on a miter saw, if you have a negative five rake, it's great because you're entering on the center of the wood. In my day to day, I typically use my 60. I like that one a lot. But then when I want super clean cuts on exposed joiner, I want a really nice cross cut. I'll go to my 82. Same thing for plywood. Uh, because they have a higher tooth count, they're gonna cut slower, but a lot, lot cleaner than like a general purpose or combination blade. So as far as limitations go, because of the high tooth count, they're gonna cut a lot slower. Even in plywood, they're gonna cut slower, but you're gonna get super clean cuts. However, if you try to rip with them, you are gonna get burning, like it's without question. And I'm guilty of it, I'm sure I had to make one quick cut and my crosscut blade was in my saw, but it's not worth it, because you with that high angle and the long cuts and the heat, you're just gonna dull them a lot faster. Let's talk about the switch hitters, general purpose and combination blade. Now these both combine aspects of rip and cross cutting, but they do it in completely different ways and serve completely different purposes. These are great blades to use day to day for non-repetitive cuts to extend the time between sharpenings of your rip and cross cut blades. General purpose blades combine elements of both cross and rip cutting. Now they have that steep angle with a lower rate for better cross cuts and then fewer teeth for better ripping. But if you're gonna cut things over an inch and a quarter, these really aren't the blades you should be using because they do have smaller gullets. When I'm making kitchen cabinets, I'm gonna go with something with a higher tooth count, but they are great for jigs and shop furniture. So how does this differ from a combination blade? A combination blade is an interesting one I've become really fond of in the last year or two. You can cut thicker material, maybe up to about two and an eighth or however high your table saw blade goes. Softer hardwood, but it's not great for plywood. It has an interesting tooth layout, typically 50 to 60 teeth, but it has five tooth sections. It has four alternating teeth in a bevel of 20 to 30 degrees, and then it has a flat top or triple chip grind that has a zero degree bevel on the top with a really deep gullet under it that's designed for carrying out lots of material. Here you can see what all the teeth do. The bevel teeth are taking slices, but then that TCG tooth comes through and cogs out a bunch of material and dumps it down to that gullet. And you can actually see every fifth tooth, a big explosion of sawdust coming out of the back of that kerf. Super cool to see because you see the bevel teeth are taking these tiny slices and leaving a super clean edge. And then that triple chip grind, which has those beveled edges, they aren't interacting with the corners, but it's scooping out the rest of the material, dumping it into that gullet. And it's just, it's neat to see how they interact with each other and why they are the way that they are. So what are the limitations of a combo blade? Well, you've got that flat tooth, right? And it's got that big gullet, which makes it great for rip cuts. It makes it great for thicker material, but it's just not gonna be as good at plywood or cross cuts, obviously as much as a dedicated cross cut blade, but you know, the general purpose is gonna do that a little bit better. So when I think about those two blades, I really like to think is like my general purpose is my light duty plywood all around blade. And then my combo blade is my heavy duty hardwood softwood blade. And that's why I've really come to enjoy those two blades. When you're selecting full kerf versus thin kerf. You want to remember a full kerf blade is about an eighth of an inch. Thin kerf is 3 30 seconds or about 25% less. Now I have a very high powered saw. So when I use a thin kerf is when I want to keep as much money out of the dust collector as possible. When I'm using exotic woods and you want to save it, you're going to use a thin kerf blade because it's going to take a lot less material. I also use it for removing box lids when you want to retain as much of that grain match as possible or, you know, lose less of your dovetails. I'll go with a thin kerf blade. Now, when you talk about horsepower, that's where a thin kerf is really gonna shine. Anything under one and a half horsepower, you definitely wanna use a thin kerf blade. You may have found if you're using a full kerf blade in your lower powered job site saw, they're getting stalling or it's really hard to push through the cut. Now, in reality, even on my saw, a full kerf blade is gonna 
be harder to push through a cut, but that's because it's so much thicker. But why is that better? It's because it's bringing more air into the cut and keeping it cooler. They're lasting longer. There's more carbide on there. So if you have a saw that's over 1.5 horsepower, you do want to go with a full curve for the most part, but you always want to have a thin curve blade in your arsenal, maybe a combo blade or a general purpose. In fact, they're a lot less expensive. CMT now has a chromium thin curve blade, which we just started carrying, which is super exciting. And they work great, I love them. So what do I use? I think everybody should have a dedicated rip and cross cut blade. I think it's important to have those when you're trying to get furniture quality parts. But if you're just banging around in the shop and doing random stuff, you look at your workflow. Uh, or do you want a combo or general purpose? For combo, if you're using like thicker, soft and hardwoods, uh, if you're doing thinner stuff or some plywood, maybe general purpose is good for you. Uh, and then, you know, if you look at your miter saw, you want to get like an 80 tooth ultra finish with a negative rake. And then of course, you know, every woodworker needs a dado stack. So let's talk a little bit about those. Now, dado blades and these CMT blades I've been using are approved for saw stop. I know that was a question in the past. They are great for dados, rabbits, grooves half laps, bridle joints, anything where you're not cutting all the way through the material. Now they typically consist of two full size blades with either ATB or FTG teeth. These incorporate both and then chippers with flat top grind teeth. They typically have a zero degree rake angle. They come in 24 or 12 tooth, and then they'll have a series of chippers that allow it to be different widths and then shims as well. So you can dial in perfect distances and the shims come, you know, in everything from like very, very thin to a little bit thicker and you can stick them between the chippers and the blade to expand the dado set. So these are great, the ones we carry come in these really nice plastic cases. Whatever you decide to get, make sure it has a good storage solution because you do not want to stack them on top of each other. You know, carbide can be really brittle so you can chip the teeth and it's just not great to just leave them loose. So make sure whatever you get comes with a way to store them. As far as limitations go, you can't make through cuts with dado. Don't even try it because that's just a whole bunch of spinning metal cutting through and sending chips your way and you know possibly other things so you want to avoid that. So that's the five most popular blades but there's two more things we need to talk about and that's how I do my cleaning and sharpening. Now cleaning is really important and it's more important than you think because the number one reason that people think their blades are dull is just sap or pitch buildup on the teeth and it comes off really easily a couple of ways. You use Simple Green, that was one that I used for years, just spray it on, let it sit for five minutes, spray it again and wipe it off. However, with uh, the newer blade coatings that reduce heat, Simple Green can take that off. So I've started using the CMT blade cleaner. It works fantastic. And what the, my favorite part about it is you can leave it on. It actually works as a rust preventer on there. I sometimes I spray it on my cast iron table saw and just wipe it around, gets rid of any gunk. It works really easy. And the way I do that, spray it on, leave it five minutes, and then spray it one more time. You can just wipe it off with a rag uh, or a soft bristle brush. Make sure you're using a soft one like nylon or brass works really well on any stubborn bits. And just wipe it off and leave it on there. You don't need to oil it or anything like that afterwards. And lastly, sharpening. I don't want to get into detail on sharpening because I've done two really good videos, one how to tell when your blade is dull and one how sharpening is done. Just know that there are sharpening services all around in your area and you'll be able to contact them just by Googling saw blade sharpening in my area. A lot of places take mail order. I'll link the people I use. They're really great. Mike up at uh, Central City Tool Supply in Santa Maria is my go-to guy. He's really great. So now you should be able to make an educated decision on which saw blade is gonna work right for you. Now for me, you know, anybody who's been following this channel that I'm a big fan of these CMT chromium blades, so much so that I put my money where my mouth is and we now carry these in my store. They have now a thin curve line, the ITK chromiums, just absolutely fantastic. And they start at like 27 bucks. It's incredible. I'm gonna include a 10% discount code down in the pinned comment for you as well. And I highly recommend these blades. I really, I mean it. They're fantastic. I've been using them for three years exclusively. What makes them so fantastic is how much carbide is on them. If you look at them compared to like Freud or Diablo, they just have so much more carbide. I'm not saying those are bad blades, but these are really top, top tier blades at a mid-level price. And that to me is where you have the high value. And just like I talked about at the beginning, that good consumables are less expensive than the cheap alternative. And these are the ones that I really, really love. So head over to the store, check it out. Guys, thanks for watching. Yeah, hopefully you like this deep dive. We got a lot more slow-mo coming out. And if you want to support the channel, head over to the KM Tools store. And guys, stay safe in the shop.